Welcome to The Wine Chemist. In this series, we will be breaking down the elements of wine, and in this episode, we are focusing on carbon dioxide. We are popping bottles and drinking champagne. Hooray! Wines that contain a significant amount of carbon dioxide are classified as sparkling wines. There are several processing techniques on how wine gets its fizz. Wait, processing. That sounds more like <laughs> Welcome to the wine chemical engineer. The differences between sparkling wines are best explained by the different techniques used to get carbon dioxide into that wine. The first technique is quick and easy. The juice from harvest is partially fermented in a tank, bottled, and ready to go. It contains high levels of residual sugars and low in alcohol. This is called the Asti method, and it results in sweet and bubbly wines. All other techniques start with a base wine. That means the juice is fermented just like still wine. This usually takes place in a stainless steel vat, and the resulting base wine is completely dry with high acidity. At this point, we can simply inject the base wine with carbon dioxide, not unlike making soft drinks or soda water. This results in carbonated sparkling wine, and it is the least expensive way to go. This also has the largest bubbles, just like soda water. The remaining three techniques all include a second fermentation. Here we start again with a base wine. Then we add the liqueur de tirage to induce a second fermentation. This mixture contains wine, sugar, and yeast. This second fermentation adds the carbon dioxide. When this takes place in an inert vessel, we simply filter, add the dosage and bottle, and we get sparkling wine made from the tank method the most recognizable being Prosecco. The intent is that the resulting wines retain all of the fruity and bright qualities with no secondary flavors. If instead we decide to take our base wine, add the liqueur de tirage, and do our second fermentation in the bottle, we introduce secondary flavors through yeast itolysis. Simply put, this is an additional time that the wine spends in contact with the dead yeast cells. This can last several months as flavors of biscuit, brioche, and toastiness are developed in the wine. After time is spent on the lees, there are two options. One is to transfer all of the wine to a tank and add the dosage and then bottle. This is called the transfer method. Alternatively, the traditional method is much more painstaking because rather than transfer to a tank, the yeast in the bottles is riddled down to the neck of the bottle, then disgorged. The bottle is then topped off with the liqueur d'expedition, or dosage, and sealed with cork and cage. Both transfer and traditional methods result in the style of sparkling wine made famous by Champagne, the spotlight wine of this episode. I know we like to call all sparkling wine Champagne, but we're not supposed to. Champagne is a region, and they get very upset and rightly so, when we throw the name Champagne on a bottle just because it's fizzy. Outside of Champagne, other areas in France call their sparkling wines Cremant, while in Spain, using the traditional method results in Cava. California, New Zealand and Australia, South Africa, they all have adopted the classic method that originated in Champagne. Remember that term dosage? That's the liquor d'expedition that we put into the final bottling in the tank, transfer, and traditional methods. This is the last splash of wine and sugar that allows the winemaker their final decision of how sweet or dry they want the final wine to taste. Most sparkling that you'll see will be listed as one of the following. Dry, extra dry, and brute. And that's the order. Brute is the driest. In this episode, we discuss the several ways in which carbon dioxide gets into wine to make sparkling wine. Simple, partial fermentation with residual sugar gives us sweet Asti sparkling wines, and inexpensive still wine injected with carbon dioxide gives us carbonated wines. Then there are the wines in which their bubbles are formed during a second fermentation. Tank method captures the bright, crisp fruit and high acids to make Prosecco while the transfer and traditional method allow time for the wine to extract secondary flavors, a technique made famous by the region of Champagne. Lastly, we learn to look for a dryness to be listed on the bottle to match our preference on sweetness level. 
brute being the driest. Until the next time on The Wine Chemist, here's to experimenting with wine. Cheers.